Hi, welcome to Pastor Talk. I'm Pastor Steve. Today I want to discuss 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If you're not familiar with this chapter, you might want to pause the video and, and read chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. You might also want to read the chapter uh, before and even after if you've got the time. And then come back to the video. Because I want to today, I want to discuss how chapter 13... Uh, is connected with chapter 12 and chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians. We often call the 1 Corinthians chapter 13 the chapter of love in the church. The word love is agape, and it's a, a love that we would say would be the Christian love. And the Apostle Paul, in his giving us this information, gives us 14 different qualities of what true love Christian love, which is greater than human love, he gives us 14 qualities of that love that we might understand what true love looks like. But something that we may not understand is that the Apostle Paul, even though he gives us these qualities and describes love in this place, this is the only place in the Bible that really gives us this true description of love like this, that that was not the only purpose for the text. In fact, in context, it goes with chapter 12 and chapter 14, and he was really discussing and talking about the gifts that he had already mentioned in chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the first 11 verses in particular, is talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He names nine spiritual graces, they're called, spiritual gifts, and he's telling us how the Holy Spirit is the one that ministers these gifts in the body of Christ. And so what I would tell you today, first of all, is uh, that we must connect the chapter of love with also the chapter before it, the spiritual gifts. And then the very next chapter, 14, is also about the use of the spiritual gifts. And in particular, the Apostle Paul is speaking about prophecy or prophesying, as we would say, uh, speaking a word for God, and also the speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues, the use of these gifts in the body of Christ. The Apostle Paul has told us that these are available to the church, and they still are today. There are some that, that take one verse in chapter 13, and they take verse 8, where it says, uh, well, it says that tongues shall cease and they use that and say, well, the, uh, spiritual gifts are not available today, that speaking in tongues is not for today, it was just for the days of the apostle. Uh, but they leave out the next fact that uh, there be no knowledge, it shall vanish away. And they'd have to throw that out to, to think such a way. So it's kind of silly, really, if, the, if a person is honest and truly takes verse 8 and with the rest of the verses around it, to say that, God, that the Apostle Paul was denouncing or denying the gifts went past the time of the Apostles. On the contrary, he really confirms it with what we have here. It's, a, it's an entire chapter discussing that, the, uh, that there should not be misuse of the gifts that he spoke of in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I want to read to you the end of, of chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians. He says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. Now, he's not really expecting us to have a hard time figuring out the answer to this. It's almost like a rhetorical question where you, I guess that's what you'd call it, rhetorical questions where we know the answer is obviously no. I mean, are everybody apostles? I mean, he starts off with a very obvious thing and comes back down to the tongues and interpretation. Tongues. Will all of us use or do those gifts? Will all of us be apostles or all of us prophets or teachers? Of course not. That's the obvious answer to those questions. But in the same vein of thought, does that mean that those gifts are not available for today? Well, of course not. In fact, he ends the chapter this way. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31. King James says, but covet earnestly the best gifts. Another word for covet is to desire. But desire earnestly. 
That, that's a strong, strong um, word to covet or to desire earnestly. That means eagerly desire the gifts of God to work in your life. And so then he goes into what we call the chapter 13, the chapter of love, and he, he wants us to understand that if we're working in the gifts and it's not through love, then it really has no value. And he, he starts off by saying it just has no, it's like a tinkling symbol that has no value. It's just a sound. And then he goes on and he talks about, in the very first of first uh, Corinthians 13, he, he talks about the fact that if we give all our money to the poor and we don't have love, charity, the King James says, which is agape love, that's what we already talked about, which is Christian love. If you have not Christian love and you give all your money to the poor, in other words, if you're not in Jesus Christ is really the, the way to look at it, and your motives for the right reasons, then giving all your money has no value to it. Well, we know giving money can't save you. You can't buy your salvation. He says, if you give your body to be burned, he says here in the early part of this chapter, and you don't have agape love, charity, Christian love, well, that means you really do not have Jesus Christ in your heart and your motive is purely you're giving your life. And it's not for the pure motives of doing it for Jesus Christ. Then it has no value. And so 1 Corinthians 13 is in the vein of, of everything that we do should be in love. And so he's talking to those in the church at that time about those in the church that were ministering the gifts of the Spirit, but possibly misusing them. You know, we're human. And so they may give a word to somebody, a prophetic word, we say, a word of prophecy, maybe saying, I feel like God told me to tell you this and so on. This is a regular thing in churches, in the Pentecostal churches. So often, by faith, we tell somebody, I, I feel like God would have me say something to you. He wants us to understand that if we're going to do that, that it must be in love, or it's not going to truly profit. It could easily be just our flesh working, because we're human. We do fail, we do make mistakes, because we're human. And that's why he gets into the issue of love here, because we do make mistakes, and we, we can fail in giving a word a prophecy or prophesying or a word, a message in tongues or interpreting. We may do it incorrectly. We may do it with wrong motive or we may just miss it, the mark, so to speak, uh, because we're human. And so he speaks about ministering the gifts, and that's what really 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about. He's not denouncing gifts. He's literally confirming gifts with the proper use of them because they must be in the love of Jesus Christ. Well, I hope this is instructive to you and helpful to you in understanding 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is Pastor Talk for you, and I'm Pastor Steve, and God bless you.